Hey, what's up everybody? Rob here from Ramp Studio Comics. Welcome back. So, uh, as you know, or maybe you know, maybe you don't, if you're new to the channel, you probably don't know, I create a lot of custom brushes. I absolutely love uh, the ability to create custom brushes inside of Clip Studio Paint. So here's a new one that I just developed. Uh, and so this one's got some rendering in there, some shading. I actually created two new chain brushes that I'm adding to my set. And if you've checked out the set, you know I've got like spider web brushes. Like we'd have like sp spawn shooting spider webs. That'd be kind of funny. Um, but you know, there's there's this one which is, has a rendering to it. And I wanted to demonstrate this real quick because there's a couple things that you might need to uh, to do to get the best effect out of it. So, uh, so for instance, if I go back to this, you can see the shadow. Oh no, I did flip it on this one. But the shadow can be backwards sometimes. That's kind of the negative aspect of having rendering in your brush. Now, you might also say, well, there's rendering in it. You know, that's your art, not mine. And, and to an extent, that would be true, I guess, but you got to remember that all of these are meant to be sort of like templates and workups. So I want you to learn from them, utilize them, but make them your own. Like, so you could use this as a template. You could even blue line this and draw your own chain style over it, which in that case, it's your art. You just use the template to help you with the basic shapes and you can modify it. Maybe you want some links a little offset that would make it look more interesting, right? So again you don't have to use it verbatim like this uh you're welcome to modify and play around with this that's kind of the point because uh, i know a lot of people feel kind of guilty about custom brushes like they're cheating i typically use it for more repetitive things anyways uh and, and time savers like i don't want to draw every chain link if i you know i might i might put this in place and again i might draw over top of it myself so i made two of these where or first, let me show you the shading aspect of it that you got to be aware of. So, for instance, if I go like this and then I go like this, uh, by the way, it's pressure sensitive. So, the more pressure you put down, the larger it's going to get. It's also uh, color adjusted. So, notice that I have white in the foreground, black in the background. Uh, so, if you're if you're looking at yours and you're getting, let's see here, this kind of effect, that's a negative, right? So, you just have to swap swap these. Uh, or what's another way you go like this and like this and it looks like a silhouette which can actually be useful as well for a template so keep that in mind sometimes you might want some chains in the background and they're silhouetted or really up close to camera usually you'll see a silhouette there something like that so that's pretty neat but but just keep in mind that you can adjust these to whatever color you want and you can see it in the little thumbnail there so you might want like I don't know the middle of it to be pink Pink chains, that's that's the thing, right? See that? Pink chains, bam. And they also overlap. So that's kind of cool for like a quick effect. Say you had like a pirate's chest and you want to put the chains all over a door or something. You can be able to do that really fast, which is pretty cool um, if you need that. And so so the, the thing about the shading that I wanted to show you is that because I added the shading in there, uh, it, it's easy to put it backwards. So let me show you what I mean there. So I go like this and I go like this. Well, what's wrong with that? There's a shadow on the top and a shadow on the bottom. So you do have to be a little bit more deliberate about this portion, but with layers, it's not hard. So what you could do is say, okay, I want one that's bending like this. I'm gonna put my focus on the size relationship that I get, because I want that little feeling of foreshortening. But I want this to be for the other side. So I'm just going to, I should have just put that on a new layer, but then I'm just going to go to edit, transform, flip, and that's it. So I got, the light source on the top of each one now so and again you can modify them as you go to look the way that you want now I also included uh, another one that's less rendered uh, where's that that's number 43 here and by the way I'm gonna put this in both sets that I have where it's uh it's gonna be in my painter set and my comic ink set I'll link them both in the description box below they are paid sets but you get like 40 something brushes I mean there's all kinds of brushes in here and I've got more uh, planned out, and I'll show you that here in a second. But with this one, it's basically the same style of chain. Uh, and there is another chain in here, just, just so you know. So there's a spider web, there's another chain link brush. So, you know, you got a couple options there. But this, uh, this particular one right here is less rendered because I was just thinking, like, for people that do want to draw more of their own, uh, this is going to be a little bit better. So if we go to, like, the G-Pen here, and you jump in and say, okay, I... I establish the initial chains but then I'm gonna really go to uh, go to town with the uh, shadows here you know you shadow chains something like this maybe got a 
you know, you something like this, like this, you know, you do this back and forth kind of wavy thing. And you know, maybe shade, shade the whole side here. It's a bit thin, so maybe you thicken up each one. It's up to you. I just wanted there to be another version where, probably even thicker, where you could like modify this as you go and render it whatever way that you want. And that, so that's why I think this one will be more important. Um, but maybe not. Maybe you just colorize it. Maybe you don't want to render it, but it's up to you. I just want to give you some options here. You know, put a little bit of bumpiness in there because if you do lines, even the shadows too straight, I feel like it doesn't look like chains. You got to bump it up a bit. That's kind of why I wanted to make these chains. You know, you pull back. See, it kind of looks, you know, looks better than this over here. But again, this is a, a lighter rendered style, so you got a little more leniency there to mess around. This one's already rendered out or shaded for you, uh, but you got to remember to flip it. And this one is a, a little bit different style with rendering. So at any rate, there's going to be more. I just wanted to give you lots of options. Okay, so with this one, I thought another good brush, and I have to test it, make sure it'll work, but I think I'll be able to get it, is, uh, you know, I drew all these by hand, these little wires and things, but I'm thinking, man, that would be another good one for, for a brush. Now, these ones up here are pretty simple. You just draw a brush line and draw a couple intersecting lines. There's no reason to create a brush for that. I'm talking like more like this big, gaudy-looking one with the shiny stuff on it. Uh, and again, I got to test it. It may or may not come out as good as I'm thinking, uh, but that's something that I'm going to try next. Uh, but I just wanted to give you an idea of, you know, some of the other, other brushes that I'll be making for you. Uh, so yeah, let me know what you think, uh, as well as any other ideas that you might have for custom brushes. These are on my Gumroad. Uh, I really appreciate the support. Some more content on the way very soon. As always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and bye for now.